We discussed earlier on the show, organizations are increasingly worried about cyber threats and with good reason. Large breaches such as the HBO leak and Equifax and targeted attacks on cities like Atlanta, Charlotte and Baltimore are more common than ever. Today's bad actors have increasingly more powerful and destructive tools at their disposal. And a company on the front lines of this battle is Israel's Checkpoint Software Technologies. John Steinberg, the president of news at LTC USA, that's our parent company, spoke with the company's vice president of threat prevention and intelligence, Nitzan Ziv. Hi, John Steinberg here, Israel Business Weekly. We're in Jaffa Port, right in Tel Aviv. My guest tonight is Nitzan Ziv, vice president, threat prevention and intelligence, Checkpoint Software. Thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for having me here. So Checkpoint, one of the world's most prominent uh, threat and cybersecurity protection companies, $16 billion market cap. Did I, did I describe the company well? Yes, indeed. What is the state of cybersecurity? What are you most focused on these days? So, as you know, the bad guys are always doing new things and are evolving, and our customers are right now in the transformation to the cloud area. So we are trying to get the best security into the cloud area, but also protect the existing IT infrastructure that is continuously growing. So we are both in cybersecurity and cloud, connectivity, mobility, everything that the customers need in order to accelerate their business growth in terms of IT security. Checkpoint invented the VPN, the virtual private network, more or less. Is that is that accurate? It was one of the first, but we invented the basic firewall. Okay. This is what we started, yes. I was going to get into firewall next. These two very traditional, and even for our viewers that might not know what a VPN or a firewall is, these were kind of the early ways of allowing people anywhere on the internet to be able to access and use the internet by, by being cordoned off from kind of public threats. Is that is that fair? Indeed. Okay. Okay. When we started with the first generation of cybersecurity, it was very naive. And then when the firewalls came in the second generation, but we evolved to the third and fourth generation. And as things became more complex, we had to evolve with them, adding more and more security layers wherever you are. So that when we say that, that we've moved beyond firewalls and VPNs and we talk about cloud security, and, and all my research before you came on was about how Checkpoint is moving into the cloud now, what, what does that mean? It means that companies right now don't build more and more data centers in-house. They want to use public uh, cloud, AWS, Azure, uh, Google Cloud. And when they do that, they need to adopt new methodologies for how to secure their infrastructure. It means that the old things that they used to do do not apply anymore to the cloud. There are new breaches, new ways that you need to protect, and we need to be there for them to make sure that they can move and transition to the cloud security. And can you support your clients? If your client is on Amazon Web Services or Google Cloud or something like that, are you still able to provide the security or is the fact that it's at Amazon or Google make it difficult for you to provide that protection? So you see many breaches today over AWS and other companies. They provide infrastructure, but if you provide the wrong configuration or the wrong cybersecurity protection, you will be hacked. So the fact that you get the infrastructure for somebody else does not protect you. We are there to make sure that everybody can transition to the cloud securely. And of course, protect from the sixth generation of cybersecurity. This is where we are right now, where everybody is attacking you from all directions, through all aspects, through mobile, from endpoint, through cloud. Wherever you go, people are trying to attack your assets, and, and they make a lot of money out of it. They can get up to a million dollars a week uh, for a good crew. So that's a good incentive. Nitsen, you served five years in the Israeli Defense Forces Intelligence Unit, right? Indeed. And why why is Israel good at cybersecurity? I mean, it, it would seem to me that physical border security, I get, right? Enemies on all sides. But when you look at the nations that are under cyber threat, you know, the United States doesn't have a lot of physical proximity enemies, but we've got advanced cyber enemies like China and Russia. So the question comes to me is, why did Israel get so good at this? So first of all, the arena of uh, conflicts is evolving. It used to be just frontal and physical, but it is evolving, and there are a lot of evidence all over the news for that. Uh, in the Israeli army, part of the things that we do is uh, also cope with those kinds of ideas. And it's kind of mentality, it's the DNA that we are getting used to. And this DNA comes with us uh, after the army, uh, and it comes to new startups and new companies and new ideas of how to protect in cybersecurity. 
But you know, when I go, I mean, I, I was at I was at the Gaza border a month or two ago, right? And and you know, you 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 recognize the physical danger of the threats that surround Israel, but you don't really think of any of those border uh, enemies or hostiles as really being particularly good at at that cyber threat, right? I mean, so. I mean, do you see where I'm going with this? Why would Israel be worried about this? Actually, we had a few cases okay. that were also published uh, in the news where a few groups tried to create applications for mobile devices and get soldiers to install them, get uh, pictures within bases of what is going on, have recording within uh, secret meetings. Um, so those are the thing, kind of things that we need to cope with on a daily basis. It's not something that happens to somebody else. It's all okay. around us, all the time, 24-7. Uh, we track a million attacks per day number. It's, it's a huge, huge number. But we try to separate everybody from the main things that we see on the internet and make sure that it is completely secure so everybody can have their digital life secured online as well. How do you manage a $16 billion company from Israel? You'd mentioned to me before we came on air that you travel four to five times a year to the U.S., you know, maybe that many times to Europe. The headquarters of Checkpoint is still here, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got a giant facility in Silicon Valley, of course. Yes. Um, how do you support a global customer base and a global employee base from Israel? So first of all, we're not an Israeli company. We are a global company. It means that we work continuously all around the clock. I work with peers in each one of the, company, uh, each one of the countries. We've got support that is 24 by 7. We've got development, which is worldwide, sales worldwide. So for us, it's, it's a global village. We're connected to each other 24 by 7. Uh, we're very passionate about our profession. So it really happens naturally for us, wherever we go. Uh, it simply happens. Uh, people come with a lot of passion to do things and create things. And, and it simply drives the business. It's an amazing experience to be part of it. When you think about the biggest cyber threats going on right now, I would say, you know, as an American, we think about uh, election, you know, government elections. Obviously, you know, we had the Russians meddle in our election. We've got an election coming up in, in two years. Um, would you say that that's one of the biggest cyber threats facing nation states right now, or, or was it something else that I'm missing? So it is. Uh, is, it, is it a concern here with the upcoming elections? Or I guess it is a concern wherever you are. So the fact is that somebody can sway a lot of votes in one way or the other by cybersecurity means, by Facebook, by social, by other um, means, um, it allows you to gain unfair advantage if somebody has this capability and others do not. Um, so definitely it's one of the arenas that is growing really fast uh, and it is a critical part to have this defense so nobody can get access to your files or promotion uh, settings for the election. Otherwise, it, it can end badly, as, as you've seen before. And is it a product area that you guys are, are in right now, looking at kind of fake information and manipulation in addition to securing people's infrastructure? So there are different ways to do that. There are the bots way, where you can actually create fake identities. And there are ways that you can actually get access to the systems uh, of existing party. These kinds of things, the existing party defense, these are things that we constantly do. And we catch quite a lot of those attempts wherever we go. But it's not limited just to politics. It's also business espionage and also in government facilities. It is all around us. What can you do in mobile? You, you mentioned to me that mobile's a, a burgeoning area of your work right now. It would seem that securing employees' mobile devices would be particularly hard. Um, you know, iOS does not allow for a lot of customization. Employees are increasingly bringing their own devices to the workplace. What does Checkpoint, and, and, and by the way, so much more of the data is now on the mobile devices that employees are using. Uh, what is Checkpoint's strategy there? So indeed, the mobile device right now has access to each one of your assets, including your Salesforce, your leads, uh, corporate data, and everything is on your mobile device. This is how we, we make the world more connected and more productive and you need to protect that. We've got solutions both for iOS and for Android to have this full security. It means that we scan the applications, we constantly scan your network, make sure that we uh, eradicate threats, and we do those publications on a yearly basis. So we constantly have more and more publication exposing what are the bad guys doing, and just recently we published a new article saying 25 million mobile devices were infected, um, and basically somebody else has control over your phone. Let's say that you are part of the politics and somebody has access to your phone, it means that you expose everything that you've got on your phone to somebody else with bad intentions.
All right, well, Neeson, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Neeson Ziv of Checkpoint Software, a pleasure having you on Israel Business Weekly. Thank you very much.